Uh, my first poem is about being bald. <laughs> and it's called Bold. Bold. But how? Only the day before, I tell you, thick brown hair as I held my newborn daughter, mewling and animated with life. And only the day before that, waves of hirsute pride at my wedding, mingling and mixing with the hair of my bride. And only the day before that, eager, earnest curls that filled my head as I commuted to my first real job. And it can only have been the day before that, when with my crew cut grown shaggy, I squirmed in the seat of a fire engine, three feet long, with shiny red fenders and a real silver bell, high atop a barber shop chair in suburban New Jersey. As the barber's scissors flashed, opened and shut, my brown hair fell, as Rome once did, or better yet, America, imperious, impetuous, immortal, only the day before. This next poem got some start thinking about uh, the political situation here and asking myself, how could so many people be so sure of themselves and be so wrong? <laughs> and I thought, what we really need is what we really need is Socrates to come back and rough these guys up a bit and knock them into outer Troy. So uh, that's what this is called. Socrates, 2010. Beneath a brilliant Athenian sun, even a white stone knows the answer. Beneath a dark Athenian moon, even a black stone has convictions. But didn't you say it's the inquiry that enlightens, the solution that obscures? Come back, Socrates. Help us to see the error of our certainty, the wisdom of our doubt, as if that tincture of hemlock were not the final sentence, but a question just beginning to form. Uh, this is a love poem. Raw silk, and this goes out to Susan, my wife. Other poets love raw silk, the iridescence of certain fish, the precious image of Venice sinking beneath the aqua alta, and words like shimmering and luminosity. Other poets love the music of the line, surprising line breaks, and a rhesus monkey swinging from the non sequiturs. Not this poet. This poet loves only you, you who put to shame all the preciousness of Venice, any shimmering monkey, and even the luminous music of iridescent raw silk. Uh, yes, the next poem uh, is about a wisdom tooth. And uh, I had a problem with a wisdom tooth, and I got to thinking, why is it called wisdom, wisdom tooth? What's wise about it? It's awful. And, um, of course, Google showed me ten seconds later why. I hate Google. A total spoil sport. But the wisdom tooth in this poem doesn't have Google. And he's wondering, or it's wondering, why am I called the wisdom tooth? Why am I wise? The wisdom tooth. All through dinner, it rises and falls as I overeat again and say the wrong thing again. During the client conference call, I am asked three questions and get two of them wrong. Hidden in its silent corner, the wisdom tooth suffers in shame. <laughs> by day, it is disgusted by the role it must play in my ingratiating smile, while by night, worn down by the grinding of fruitless worry, the wisdom tooth sighs itself to sleep. Of all the mouths in the world, it wonders, why did it have to be born into this one? <laughs> How different life would have been, erupting in the jaw of a president, impacting the grin of a billionaire, or red and inflamed, spoiling the season of an actress adored for her toothsome smile. Because understanding everything seems to do nothing. The wisdom tooth aches and complains. If this is wisdom, it asks, 
how much worse could ignorance be?